One evening in the, in the sheds, the engines were were talking about stories about cephalopods. You know something, said Thomas. I remember at that aqua aquarium, there was this giant Pacific octopus that could, that could mimicize a human's personality trait. It even, one time it escaped from its tank one time and stole that person's car. I, I just couldn't laugh my head off. Lots of things are... Who? Oh, lots of things have been disco- things have been discovered. You remember that giant squid in the Japanese harbor bay? Oh, you meaning the one that that was discovered that was discovered there about two years ago? Hiro told me about it when he was on his trip in Japan. Yeah, exactly. That was the one. That was a really big one too. Probably the largest one they've ever seen. Oh, that's nothing," said Toby. "I heard there's a squid even bigger than the the giant and the colossal squids." Whatever do you mean, Toby? Well, it goes something. Well, Salty told me that. Told me that there were these these squids known as mega squids, the size of a of that American engine known as named Sam. You remember him, of course. Said that they were the size of that, and even could eat a whole blue whale with its one giant beak. Pa! Said James, "I don't believe anything like a make something that size would exist. Oh, you wouldn't be so sick, skeptical, James. One time, a fisherman discovered a, a squid. Said he saw a squid that size." Please tell us about it," said Percy. "Oh well," said Toby. "It happened about twenty years ago. The year was nineteen ninety-five, and it took place in Alaska. There was a fisherman known as Harvey Saw- Sawman. He loved fishing and loved, and he was friendly to everyone he met. He even sold. He even sold fish." And was very successful at his business. One day he was sent. One night he had a midnight shift, shifting for more fish as usual. He had been he had just finished fishing, catching fish, sharks, starfish, crabs, and lobsters, and octopuses, and smaller squids as he could. One day he was in. While he was in his office, writing down some resumes. How many fish he catched and the prices they were. He heard a strange creaking sound coming from his boat. He quickly went out to the side outside to investigate. When he realized what he had saw, in his own in his disbelief, what he was seeing, he saw a big squid. This squid was bigger than usual than the usual giant squid and colossal squid that he had seen before. It had chacked and shaked and rolled his ship. His fishing boat. He tried to fight the squid off with, with just his one knife, but he failed in the process. The squid pulled him into the water, into the sea, and he fell into the sea below. The squid pulled his、uh, his fishing boat down into the depths of the ocean. Lucky he was found. He was swept up the shore of the beach somewhere when a fireman. Was at the beach walking his dog and discovered him, unconscious but alive. He tried to explain his situation to the army, but they didn't believe anything such as a mega squid would exist. And even since that day on, everyone ignored his advice. When he asked for their help, they just ignored him and moved on with their everyday lives. Said that he was insane. But he said that he, the one thing he remembered about that squid was its big eye. And so, if you ever go out on a full moon at midnight, you know the mega squid is hunting. At that point, pa said James, "I don't believe something like that. That would, 
even exist. A squid that size would just be barbaric. And something like that, even destroying a fishing boat is just bo- just out there. Don't be so sceptical, James. You might just come across a mega squid someday. Pa, said James, and he just, and he went to sleep. The next morning, the next day, James was very busy. He had to pull passenger trains and goods trains to and from, backwards and forward. One day, after taking his small goods train to the Scarlowy Railway Harbour, James was eager to rest, but then his driver came up with some important news. James, we, you are needed to take the Flying Kipper train. Uh, What? Me pull that flying kipper, smelly flying kipper train? Why me? Can't Henry or Murdoch or Neville or or Boko or Derek or one of the Scottish twins pull it? Unfortunately, Henry is needed to take is needed to take the midnight express train tonight, and Murdoch is taking a heavy goods train over to. The mainlands and won't be back until next to, until next week. And Boko and Derek are at the works having an overhaul, so you're the only engine available. James was fuming by this. He had a long day and was needed for a long and wanted to rest at home. But orders were orders. James was in a foul mood as he buffered up to the flying kipper tray. Donald rode and puffed beside him. Ah, go, Lord James. Watch out for the beggar squid. You don't want to come against it. You have been listening to too much of Toby's story. If I ever came across something like that, I'll just re-smoke it and make it shoe off. Don't be so susceptible. The mega squid might eat you alive. Ha ha. Dame just ignored him and went on his du- and went on. The flying kipper went, were, went very well. James had delivered all the fish to every supermarket in, in Sodor and was eager for a long rest when he got home. Sooner or later, he had to deliver. Sooner or later, he had to deliver one, a few more fish, down to the Little Western Market, as it was the market days there over the Little Western. James puffed along the coasty beach waves on the Little Western, but he was travelling a bit too fast. There was also a warning about travelling on this railway during high weather tides. <laughs> Henry and Thomas have often had accidents here before. James should have but James paid no attention to the signs about going slow. When he reached the top, he realized what had happened. Sooner or later, he felt the tracks getting weaker. Sooner or later, he he was turned to the wrong siding on a bridge. But unfortunately, the bridge ended there. James's driver and fireman applied the brakes, but it was too late. James went for a screeching... Oh, Horace! cried James. Not again! As he came off the, the track into a small rock pool and the flying kipper's van fell on top of him. Fish were all over him. James did not enjoy this one bit. James's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. James's driver had landed in a rock pool. Unfortunately, his clothes were all ruined upon the impact. James's driver came up and fireman came up and said, Oh, thank heavens for this soft, squishy thing I landed on. I would have broken my back for sure. Uh, excuse me, said James's driver. Uh, please tell me you say that again. Oh, I landed on this squishy skin thing. Hmm. Unfortunately, it was very dark to see what it was. James's driver and fireman quickly repaired, got a spare light bulb out of their toolbox and quickly put it on James's broken headlamp and turned it on bright. Oh my goodness! They cried. Is that what I think it is? 
Even James was in shock what he was seeing. Is that a, what, is that a, 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 a mega squid? Why, indeed it is, said the, his driving fireman. I believe it actually does exist. Uh, really? Uh, uh, how come it's not attacking us or eating us? Don't be so sceptical, James. From the looks of this one, this one's already dead. It must have been swept up the shore. James was speechless by it. He had never... Seeing a squid this size was just completely in his disbelief. James's drone fireman decided to take shelter near a near, co- a near beach house nearby. A uh, uh, drone fireman, uh, where are you going? Oh, we're going to take shelter up, up at the beach houses somewhere. Don't worry, we'll call for help to get help tomorrow. Uh, you're leaving me here with, uh, with uh, this thing? Don't worry, it's dead, James, said the driver. And don't worry, they won't. A, squ- a squid that size would not even hurt a fly. James just in- tr- James accepted it, but he he was but he couldn't get any sleep that night, as he was too f- as he uh, as he was get as he saw the s- the the squid's big eyes staring directly at him. The next morning, Duck arrived with the breakdown train. And Sir Top and Hat and some marine biologists came along to, ins- to inspect the, the, the squid's size. Well, 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 James. It looks like you dis- you've just dis- made a new discovery since Toby's discovery of finding Bertram. How do you feel about that? Really tired and really freaked out by, it, by its size. Sir Top and Hat... Even spoke kindly to James. Well, 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 James. It looks like you made a new discovery of a new cephalopod species. And don't worry, the squid won't harm you, as it's already dead, as your driver stated before. But anyway, even if these squids did attack, these squids are usually are the squids are and octopuses are usually very harmless creatures. They were not. They don't hurt humans. They will only do it if they are feeling threatened or attacked. Then most of the time, they're usually very curious about wh- what we are. No worry, James. As soon as you're at the works, mended, you'll be soon be back at work in no time. James was still speechless about about it. James accepted, but he was still speechless from that day. Even from day on, he gets, he still couldn't get over the, that the squid size, the giants that of the squid size. The other engines, other engines did not say a word to him, even at the sheds. But as times went by, as Toby pa- as Toby passed by, pulling, pulling a goods train, he said to him, "Don't say I didn't warn you."